Hi, I'm Stuart from the Norfolk Honey Company and welcome back to our sponsored apiary where we've a range of products from Happy Valley Honey who are the UK sole distributors of the Honey Pour polystyrene Langstroth hives and we've been spending the last few weeks testing out and trying out some of this equipment and gradually moving over some of our colonies from our commercial hives that we normally use into these Langstroth hives. I've not ever used Langstroth hives before, so it's a, a really good opportunity for us here to give them a try and to see how they work compared to our national and commercial hives. And I'm very grateful to Paul at Happy Valley Honey for supplying us with this equipment for this summer. If you haven't yet taken a look at his website, please do pop across to the website and have a look at the range of products that he has on offer. I'll pop the website address in the description below. So please do pop over and have a look at the website and don't forget to check out Paul's Twitter and Instagram feeds and I'll pop the links down in the description below as usual. So today we're going to take a look at the Shook Swarm colonies again. Uh, we've got two of them here. Uh, one of them, you'll recall, uh, was suffering from uh, probably chalk brood. There was some sac brood as well, I think. And we've requeened that. Paul, again, very kindly sent over one of uh, his queens, which he supplies. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, queens or bees generally, then again, please have a look at Paul's website. So we've actually introduced the queen under a cage and we're gonna pop into the apiary and have a look and, and see how she's doing there. And if everything's okay, we'll release her into the colony. And then we have another colony that we had the Bailey comb change conversion on, which unfortunately failed because the queen got through the queen excluder and in frustration, I just carried out a shook swarm on them. So we'll have a look at those as well and see how well they're doing. So I'll get my suit on and we'll head off into the apiary. Okay, so the girls seem a little bit grumpy this morning for some reason. We'll get straight in. Still struggling to draw this particular comb, which is interesting in itself because we have other colonies that we've added boxes to and they've drawn comb very, very quickly across entire brood boxes. So. Um, we, we may have to just wait and see how the new queen in this colony uh, affects how uh, quickly they can draw comb. Uh, but they're certainly storing the nectar that they have been gathering. But they do seem a little bit on the, the grumpy side today. Uh, maybe it's the weather, although it's, uh, it's quite warm. Uh, we're not expecting storms, but you can see just how the bees are coming up. If I don't smoke them, just how quickly the bees are coming up from the frames and onto my hands and into the air. Uh, so uh, just trying to make a emergency queen cell here. So we'll leave that just for now until we get to the cage where we've got our queen. So what I'm going to do is just go straight through to the cage, which is at the far end here. So we'll just open these up. And not go through those frames just yet. separate these frames. And this is the particular frame that we've got the queen in the cage and what we did was actually pushed it into the comb. So here you can see we've got the cage and hopefully in here we've got our queen. So I'll just lay the frame down and then we can have a look. So here's our cage, um, so we pushed that into the comb, the queen is under there somewhere, that we've got eggs and some young larvae developing, and we used an area of comb that had capped brood that was emerging, and so the queen has got 
attendants under there that are trapped with her. So I'm now just going to ease this off so that the bees are then able to move and we'll see if we can spot the queen. Well, uh, as usual, the queen appears to be wearing her cloaking device because I can't see her. She has got a red dot. But we've got uh, eggs in these cells. Let me just tilt the frame so we can have a look inside. So you should be able to see those eggs in those cells. Uh, but where the queen is, I'm not too sure. So what I'm thinking is that maybe the queen was able to get out of the side of the, the cage here. Uh, there is a wire that's loose, so maybe if we do a full inspection, we'll be able to find her somewhere in the colony. You might have noticed that there are some emergency queen cells so we'll look to knock those down if we've got eggs and then hopefully over the coming weeks these bees will start to calm down a little bit because they are a little bit fractious today so let's carry out a full inspection and see where we get so we'll come back all the way to the start here because we've seen eggs i'm going to knock down any queen cells that i see because i don't want these bees to have the same traits as the original queen that was in here. Uh, we were struggling with um, disease problems, but also they tend to be a little bit on the excitable side, so it'd be nice to get some bees that are a little bit calmer. So let's have a look through and I'll point out anything interesting as we go along. So these are Langstroth hives. Uh, I know that a lot of you will be used to using Langstroth hives, particularly all our friends over in the States. Uh, here in the UK, the majority of beekeepers, I suspect, use the British Standard National in its various forms. And so these frames are considerably bigger and also have shorter lugs on the side. So if you uh, if you're happy handling your bees and you've got large colonies then these frames are ideal because it gives you a much bigger brood space with which to work with. So here we've got a emergency, an emergency queen cell, so I'm just going to cut that out and remove it. And I'm going to do that with all of the emergency queen cells that I see but I'm doing that because I've seen eggs. I know that we have eggs in this colony that can only have come from the queen that we've received from Paul at Happy Valley Honey. And if you do need uh, a replacement queen, then pop over to his website and have a look. Um, personally, I don't have any queens available currently, but I'm sure that Paul probably has some uh, that he would be very happy to sell to you. So again, on this frame, we've got emergency queen cells here, and I'm taking them out because I don't want this colony to have the traits of the uh, parent. So that one's actually been chewed down, that cell's been chewed down. So that's all of them on that side. And then again, we've got emergency cells on this side interesting that the bees have produced these emergency cells even though they now have a queen and what we don't want is to give them any opportunity to either swarm or replace the new queen that they've got so having removed these queen cells it will mean that if they continue to produce queen cells, then the traits that we'll get will be from Paul's queen rather than the queen that was in here originally. So we'll have a different genetic line 
and different traits that that queen will bring. And I suspect that maybe these emergency cells have been produced because our new queen was trapped for a few days. We'd had her in that cage for several days now. And we just continue cutting out all of these queen cells. That must be eight or nine that I've cut out now. And although these bees are quite flighty, they come up and fly onto my hands, uh, they're not actively trying to sting, certainly not at the moment, and we'll try and keep it that way, but they just seem to be very flighty. And while I'm looking for queen cells, I'm also checking out the health of the bees and the brood. You'll be aware perhaps if you've seen some of my other videos that uh, we've struggled with a colony with chronic bee paralysis virus. If you haven't seen that video, please do take a look at it. Um, but it has made me very aware of checking colonies for any signs of that disease, virus infection in particular. But these, these bees look perfectly healthy at the moment. Get more queen cells here. So we'll take those out. It's important to scan all of the frame just to make sure that you've got all of the queen cells removed. I would also advocate shaking each frame so that you can see all of the cells, but I'm actually trying to see if we can spot the queen as well. So I don't actually want to shake the bees off and then shake the, the new queen off the uh, frame as well uh, before I get a chance to see her. So this is the frame that the Queen was caged onto. And we've got a large patch of eggs beneath the area that we had her caged. So she's obviously been there and been laying eggs, but there are more queen cells here, which we'll just take out. And actually on this side of the frame, we've actually got a large patch of eggs here as well. So she has at some point uh, come out of the cage and has been happily laying eggs. So that's good news. And, and given that they are uh, eggs still in these cells, it, it means that she's been out and uh, around for the last couple of days. So. Hopefully, she's still in here somewhere and we'll, we'll spot her. So we're on to the last couple of frames now. Um,
so uh, we've got some good news and some bad news. Uh, the good news is that we have a laying queen in the colony. The bad news is that unfortunately it's not Paul's. Um, if you look to this top corner here, you'll see a queen walking across the comb quite happily and unfortunately that's not Paul's Queen because she doesn't have a red dot on her and that's actually quite a, an interesting point if you do mark your Queen if she is superseded or replaced then it's fairly straightforward and easy to tell if you don't mark your Queens then it can be slightly more difficult to to actually tell whether it's the old queen or a new queen. So what's happened here? Let's just work at this logically. We removed the queen and replaced her with Paul's queen in a cage last week. We've now removed that cage. I haven't seen Paul's Queen, but there were eggs underneath that cage. Uh, we destroyed the Queen last week, so perhaps, and they certainly wouldn't have had time to have replaced the Queen and for that Queen to have emerged and mated and start laying. So it would appear that maybe this colony had two Queens in it when we removed the old queen, we left in place the replacement queen. I think she's now wandered off this comb. Uh, so we have a queen wandering around on the frames, laying eggs, uh, but unfortunately it's not the queen that Paul has sent. So I'm really sorry Paul, but it appears I've made one of those assumptions that we only had the one queen in here and unfortunately we now have a replacement but it's not your queen so let's just have a look at this last frame so i am making this, the assumption that that queen is a laying queen which i'm pretty certain she is and i don't expect that we will now see paul's queen in here and I think the bees have actually destroyed her and kept their own. So we're going to continue with taking out these emergency queen cells because we have got a queen here. So we're going to dig these out and place this frame back in the hive and then we will come back and carry out another weekly inspection next week to see exactly what's happened seven days after today. So what I'm going to do is just close these up. I'm going to pop the frame that was on the outside just into the middle to encourage them to draw that. While we've got a flow on and the weather is fine, we can get the bees to hopefully draw this last remaining comb in the middle of the colony without causing any problem in terms of chilling brood. It's not something you'd do in the spring, but in the height of the summer, that's not a problem. And we'll just close these up. Trying to avoid squashing bees. And that's our inspection complete. So this is our second shook swarm colony. Uh, these bees uh, reacted very well to the shook swarm process compared to the other colony. Uh, we've added a second box as you can see. So just looking at the whole setup that we've got here, we've got the standard floor, then we've got two of the deep boxes. So these are what we're using as our brood boxes. Uh, there's a feeder on the top, but that's empty. We're not using that at the moment. We just used that when we had the initial shook swarm. 
and then on top we've got the migratory roof and this just fits square to the top of the boxes so that if you're stacking them side by side maybe on a trailer or on the back of a pickup or in your car then uh, there's not uh, a section that comes down at the side and creates a gap so you can effectively get more uh, hives stacked closer together. So the bees had actually drawn the bottom box really quickly. Uh, we were really pleased with that. So we've just literally put another deep box on top of the bottom box and we've not yet looked inside. So today will be the first time in a week that we will have looked. So I'm hoping that the bees will have come up into that top box and they will be at least starting to draw some of the frames in there. So we'll give them a quick smoke and then we'll start breaking it down and we'll see what we've got in this top box. So actually, uh, what we've got is the bees haven't actually come up into this top box at all. We've got a queen excluder in place. So what I think we'll do now is we'll remove the queen excluder and try something called checkerboarding. So we'll, we'll take this off, we'll have a look in the bottom box, we'll get the camera in closer, and then we'll go through the process of checkerboarding and show you what's involved with that. And hopefully that will encourage the bees to start drawing some of these frames of foundation. So it looks as if we've got lots of bees in this colony, but they just don't want to go through that queen excluder and up into the top box. Uh, they seem again a little bit um, enthusiastic to come and see us today. So this could be, uh, could be quite an interesting move. The checkerboarding is a method by which you can increase the number of frames that the bees are working on and uh, use them for replacement or expansion, that kind of thing. And what it involves is alternating the existing frames with frames of foundation. So we have a drawn frame here. The next one inside will be a replaced frame of foundation. Drawn frame, foundation, drawn frame, foundation, drawn frame, foundation, drawn frame, foundation. And the frames that we take out here, we'll put into the box that was on top and we'll replicate that position above them. But instead of having the first frame as a drawn frame, we'll actually have that as foundation. So we won't have a frame of foundation directly above another frame of foundation below it. So the frame of foundation in the top box will be above the drawn comb beneath. So let's just go through that process. And as we go through, we'll inspect the bees, see what they're up to. And hopefully we might spot the queen, but we'll be looking for eggs. We'll be looking for disease, that kind of thing. So let's crack on. So I'm gonna work from the furthest side away from me this morning, just so that we can get this on the camera. I would normally be standing where the camera is at the moment. So here's our first frame coming out, out nice and gently. I'll just have a quick look. So that's pretty much all stores on the outside of that frame. And again, on the inside face, lots of stores. So this frame is going to sit in the top box. So we'll pop that in the top box. And in the bottom box, we'll replace that with a frame of foundation when we start to replace it. So I'll just remove a couple of frames in this top box. And pop this frame across and into the top box. So in the top box, the next frame will be foundation. So we can push the frame of foundation across. I'll just take out a couple more frames so that we can use these in the bottom box and also give us a little bit more room in the top box when it comes to replacing the frames. So remembering that the 
frame that we've just taken out is going to be the replacement frame of foundation. The next frame stays in the bottom box. And here we've got frame of brood, all capped, looking pretty healthy. Uh, we do appear to have a wax moth problem. Uh, there's some bald brood here, but we'll just have a little look. And generally that looks fine. So that can go back into this colony because that's going to remain in the bottom box. The next frame that's coming out is going to go across into the top box, what will in, in effect be the top box. So in this frame we've got lots of eggs. I'll hold it so we can try and get a shot down into some of the cells. And the bees are fairly calm on the comb. They're actually quite flighty, just like the other colony, but when they're on the comb they actually seem quite calm. So we'll pop this one across and just shuffle my way across. So here you can see we've got the frame of fully drawn comb and that's got food stores in it. Then we've got a frame of foundation and then we've got a frame with more food stores and also brood and eggs. So the next frame is going to be foundation. So we'll pop that across while we're thinking about it. I'm trying to avoid trapping any bees in between the frames. And then we're back up to the top box. So what we can do now is we can replace that frame with a frame of foundation. So that can go in there and then we can carry on our inspection. Lots of stores in this frame, but also eggs have been laid, so the queen's been on this one again. So this one can come across and go into the top box. And by putting eggs in the top box, as well, it will encourage bees up into that to take care of the young. We'll again just pop another frame of foundation across. And so the next frame that we look at in the bottom box, what's in effect the bottom box, we'll leave in the bottom box. So lots of stores, but on this side we've got eggs again so the queen has laid eggs in this one so that can now come across here and remain in the bottom box and then we add a frame of foundation next to that one and so we continue Here we've got lots of brood. The bees are very flighty today. Uh, again, brood and eggs on this reverse side. So we'll leave this one in the bottom box. And I don't think there's any particular right way in which to do this, as long as you have a mixture in the top and bottom boxes. Encouraging the bees to go into the top box, then that should be fine. So we're gonna take the next frame and place this in the top box. Lots and lots of brood, which should hopefully emerge over the next week or so. The queen's actually on this frame. So she's just wandering around in the middle here. 
So we'll just be mindful that she's on that frame. And we'll pop this into the top box. I'll just make a little bit of room. Taking another frame out. And then this frame can sit quite happily. And then coming back to the main bottom box, we'll place another frame of foundation in and move on to the next frame. And if you take your time and you're methodical, then this is a, a very simple way of getting the bees onto lots more of the comb. Encourage them to draw the foundation out. So the bees are getting really quite uh, fractious now. I've been stung a couple of times, so uh, they're really not the happiest bees today. So we've completed the checkerboarding and I'm just popping in the last frame at the front end to the camera and that's foundation. And in the box above, we'll have a drawn frame along to checkerboard that. So I'm just going to tighten everything up and then we'll lift the top box onto here, but we won't leave the queen excluder in place. We'll remove the queen excluder. So uh, the colony got a little bit agitated with that procedure. So we've um, just given them a couple of minutes to calm down again and um, regardless of smoking them, uh, they were really not happy and decided to start stinging. So we're not going to add a feeder with food in it to this. There's a lot of forage available for them at the moment. So we're just going to allow them to continue to draw the comb uh, on this foundation and we'll come back next week and see how they've progressed. So two really interesting colonies there for two completely different reasons. Uh, firstly, my apologies, Paul. Uh, I really didn't mean to kill your queen. Uh, it's just one of those things that can happen. Uh, there's no reason that there should have been that second queen in that colony. And there's no way that those bees could have produced a queen so quickly from us destroying the old queen. So, well, as you can see, we've moved to another location. Uh, the bees just suddenly got really feisty uh, at the back of the truck. They'd obviously followed us down from the apiary and we really don't want to be recording videos uh, with those bees chasing us around up and down the path. So we've come across to one of our other apiaries just to finish off. So it looks like that first colony had produced a super seizure queen and we just didn't see it. I make mistakes as much as any other beekeeper and it's just one of those things. So I think that entire apiary is one that we'll look to requeen because all of the bees in that apiary come from uh, a line that appears to be uh, quite uh, defensive. And uh, now that we've got followers as well, I really don't want that to permeate through into other apiaries. So I think we'll uh, remove all of those queens and start again. The second colony that we inspected were absolutely horrible. Uh, they were stinging. I think I got stung maybe four or five times in the end. And we just had to finish that video as quickly as we could. Uh, we've now got that checkerboard system in place and hopefully with the nectar flow that's on, they'll be able to draw those combs very quickly and store some of the nectar and get a really good brood box in place. Again, we'll remove that queen. Uh, what I think we'll do is once the checkerboard system has worked, we'll then remove the top box and set that up as a separate colony. And I'll show you that video as we get through into the coming weeks. It's worth saying that that checkerboard technique is really effective at getting bees onto more frames, but you do need to have the right conditions. So it needs to be 
good warm conditions, warm overnight conditions, a nectar flow or be prepared to feed them but most importantly lots of bees. You do need to have a good strong colony in order to get those bees to pull all of those extra frames. My thanks and apologies once again to Paul at Happy Valley Honey for supplying us with all of this equipment and that queen. I really am very embarrassed and apologetic about it. But we will uh, see what we can do over the coming weeks. We must get the pollen trap in place and give that a, a try out and we'll probably do that next week. And I hope to record a video showing you how we're going to do that. Finally, don't forget to take a look at our Patreon page. It's where you can support me producing these videos and in return have access to lots more content. We're gonna head off now and grab some lunch and just try and remove some of these stings from uh, my boots. And also the camera got stung a few times, which is interesting. So we'll catch up next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>